This is WYMT Mountain News at 5.30. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. Many of us are getting another break from the rain right now, but it could get soggy again overnight as the flash flooding threat continues. Chief Meteorologist Paige Noel begins our severe weather alert day coverage. Paige. Yeah, Steve, you said some of us are getting a nice rain break. Others are starting to get a little bit of a soaking. We're seeing those pop-up showers and storms. Those are very heavy at times. It's going to take you to radar. We're seeing just that one small line of showers and storms. We'll go ahead and zoom on that. Moving into parts of Northern County, I'm sure we'll hear that here in the studio in just a few minutes. Seeing that starting to move into parts of Knott County. We're also seeing it into Southern McGoffin County, and that's going to continue to push to the south and to the east. Has been a little bit slow moving and has produced a lot of rain. I know that moved through Jackson just a few minutes ago. So it's just producing very, very heavy rain. Localized flooding could definitely be an issue. Keeping an eye on this little storm over into parts of Harlan where they're seeing some heavy rain as well. And the good news is though that right now none of this is severe. Remember that we are in a marginal risk. One out of five for severe weather this evening. I think some of those showers and storms could at least be on the stronger side to severe side, but we'll see that kind of diminish as we head into the rest of those evening hours. Pop-up showers and storms have been the main game today, but wide spread chances return late night early into your Thursday. Those temperatures into about those lower 80s. Some spots maybe into the upper 70s. You'll notice a little bit cooler over into Jackson where they just received that rain starting to move into parts of Hazard as well. Those dew points very uncomfortable. Upper 60s to lower 70s. So feeling very very hot and humid outside and there's that flash flood watch we've been talking about for days now. That is still until 8 p.m. on your Thursday due to the heavy rain moving in overnight. Have a look at that full forecast coming up in just a few short minutes. All right Paige. Thank you. Thank you. Tonight, we're working to learn more about a developing story out of Letcher County. That is where earlier today, investigators found a man and woman dead inside a home in the Big Cowan community. State police say it appears both were shot. Right now, troopers are just calling it a death investigation. We will have much more on this story tonight at 6. A major reversal in the nation's policy on coal. The Trump administration is rolling back an Obama-era effort targeting coal-fired power plants. Olivia Russell takes a deeper look at what this could mean for the people here in Kentucky. The Trump administration is fighting to bring back the U.S. coal industry with a new plan, the Affordable Clean Energy Rule. And later today, the EPA will be finalizing it. The new plan gives more control to individual states, allowing them to submit plans to the EPA, creating their own regulations. According to the U.S. Energy Information Administration, 75 percent of Kentucky's energy came from coal in 2018, compared to the national average, which is only 30 percent. The Kentucky Coal Association and the Kentucky Conservation Committee agree that this new rule can be positive, but for different reasons. The Kentucky Coal Association sees this as a way to save the struggling coal industry. It's a step in the right direction that will help, help save the coal fleet, which is vital to jobs and manufacturing base and electricity. While the Kentucky Conservation Committee thinks this could be a step back, it's also optimistic that the new rule could lead to exploring other sources of energy. Then that gives us the opportunity to identify the solar programs that are already underway and the wind programs that are already underway. When it comes to the Senate, the Affordable Clean Energy Rule has the support of Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. I look forward to the administration rolling out a new policy that upholds the rule of law, keeps the EPA within its statutory role, and encourages American energy reliability and affordability. In Lexington, Olivia Russell, WKYT. The rule will go into effect shortly after publication in the Federal Register. Environmental groups are expected to challenge this in court. A Laurel County man is in jail after allegedly threatening people with a knife. 26-year-old Joshua Harris of London is charged with alcohol intoxication and terroristic threatening. The Clay County Sheriff's Department says it received a complaint around 1.30 this morning about an out-of-control man threatening people with a knife. Harris was later arrested at a nearby gas station. Police want you to keep an eye out for a Central Kentucky man. They tell us 28-year-old Christopher Lee Harlan should be considered armed and dangerous. He's wanted on multiple charges in Boyle and Mercer counties. Some of the charges include drug trafficking pertaining to fentanyl and heroin. State police are investigating a death at Cumberland Falls near the McCreary-Whitley County line. That's where troopers tell us a body was discovered with an apparent gunshot wound below the falls at around 10 o'clock this morning. State police do not suspect foul play. 
Today, the Hazard Police Department finished moving into their new location in downtown Hazard, which used to be a unique two-story McDonald's. WYMT's Katie Cook tells us how the new facility could benefit the community. Moving isn't always easy, especially in the rain. It's been very hectic. But in this case, it's well worth it. I think it's going to be a great place to be at. I think it's going to help us a lot. From a bigger parking lot to more space. It's more handicap accessible. Uh, there's multiple uh, entrances and exits in this building compared to the old one. The new building is more accessible to the public. This will better serve our community for, for many years. And the department is making the most out of the move. We've tried to incorporate uh, every bit of technology that uh, we can into this facility. Making the community a safer place. We're just across the street from the fire department now and uh, you know that's a big asset because we back each other up. From one serving hamburgers. The new PD, the old McDonald's, it's it doesn't even look like it used to. To now serving public safety. They've done just about everything brand new inside. This building continues to make an impact on the community each and every day. In Perry County, Katie Cook, WIMT Mountain News. The upgraded building is twice the size of their old department. The police department wants to thank everyone in the community that helped them move. A Georgetown police officer is back in Kentucky after an accident last week in Wisconsin. Georgetown police say Officer Cole Sentner and his wife were brought back to Kentucky after a 16-hour trip. Sentner was injured after a motorcycle crash. He suffered several broken bones and a collapsed lung. His family says he has been moved to a, rehabil a rehabilitation center here in Kentucky ahead of several more surgeries. In Washington today, Kentucky native Kelly Knight Craft faced a Senate confirmation hearing. She is President Trump's pick to be the U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations. Craft previously served as Ambassador to Canada. She is, of course, the wife of billionaire coal executive and Hazard native Joe Craft. Both are influential Republican donors. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says he expects Craft to easily be confirmed to the position. The U.S. military says a Japanese tanker attacked in the Gulf of Oman last week was damaged by a limpet mine. According to the Navy, the mine used in the attack looks just like mines Iran displays during military parades. Limpet mines are usually attached to the hull of a ship below the water surface using magnets. A single swimmer can place one. Investigators found such a magnet atta attached to the Japanese tanker, which was carrying flammable methanol. The Navy says it has hand and fingerprints from whoever placed the mine. They started out throwing baseballs and ended up throwing punches. A brawl broke out at a youth baseball game in Lakewood, Colorado. That's just west of Denver. The game involved seven-year-olds, but it wasn't the kids who were fighting. The Lakewood Police Department said on Facebook that coaches and parents unhappy with a baseball game involving a 13-year-old umpire began fighting. Uh, this, of course, video of the fight. Police say several people were hurt, one seriously. They charged four people with disorderly conduct and fighting in public. No children were hurt. Coming up on Mountain News at 5.30, a 103-year-old woman is making history at the senior games in New Mexico. And another soggy day as we head into your Thursday, but looks like we get a little bit of relief heading into your Friday, maybe even a little bit into the weekend as well. I'll have a look at that full forecast next.